Hello, and welcome to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary's Home Discovery Series. Today's program is Raptors Up Close, Hawks Online, with our very own Ridge Top Rachel, Hawk Mountain Senior Educator. Hi, friends. My name is Jamie Dawson. I'm the Director of Education at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. We are so glad that you're joining us today. Hawk Mountain is a private nonprofit, and membership is the lifeblood of our organization. To all of our members, a huge thank you for your continued support. And if you're joining us today and you're not a member, we hope that you consider becoming one in the future. Hawk Mountain hopes that everyone remains healthy and safe during this time of COVID crisis. And we are so excited to offer our community a variety of free virtual programming. As always, Hawk Mountain greatly appreciates any donations. Just so everyone is aware, today's program is being recorded. The video will then be accessible on Hawk Mountain's YouTube channel as a continued resource. We also have a link on our website connecting you to our YouTube channel. At any time throughout today's program, viewers may submit questions through the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen on the Zoom platform. We designate a time at the end of the program to take some questions from the audience. We are so excited that Ridgetop Rachel is joining us today with a very special feathered coworker. Rachel has been working at Hawk Mountain for over 12 years, providing excellent care and training for our avian educators. Rachel also coordinates all of our core school and group education programs. Rachel is an essential worker at Hawk Mountain and continues to provide life-sustaining care for our resident raptors, even during our time of closure. Rachel, thank you so much for all that you do, and we are so excited to meet your special feathered coworker. Hi friends, thank you so much, Jamie, and thank you everyone in the audience. I am thrilled, I'm honored, and it is a privilege to work at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary, the world's very first refuge for birds of prey. Without uh, further delay, let's meet one of my feathered coworkers. I'm putting on uh, some equipment. This happens to be a glove because the bird that you're going to meet in a moment is going to be perched on my arm. So my arm is serving as a tree branch. Be right back. Thanks, Rachel. Good girl. Hi, everyone. Well, I'm thrilled to introduce a live raptor up close. This happens to be a raptor. Now that word, just think about that word for a moment. Raptor. What is a raptor? Well, it's a predatory bird. So if you were thinking about a bird that hunts for a living, you're correct. Raptors have three specific adaptations. That word adaptation, well, it means a tool, a body part, maybe a behavior that helps an animal survive. If you can think of the three adaptations that help raptors survive, I'll show you some of those in a moment. Well, first of all, raptors being predatory birds or hunters are seeking food. They catch their food using their powerful feet. So if you can take a close look at these talons, those feet with very sharp, powerful claws or toenails, this raptor uses her feet, her talons, to catch her food. Now, the feathered coworker that we're looking at and working with right now happens to be a red-tailed hawk. Well, she's turned to the side, 
giving you a beautiful profile view of her beak or bill. Another adaptation of raptors happens to be that curved, hooked, very sharp bill or beak for ripping and tearing her food. Some of us use a fork or a knife, maybe chopsticks or our own fingers to help us eat our food. Raptors absolutely need that other adaptation, a sharp hooked beak to help them eat their food because they don't have teeth to help them eat. Well, the third adaptation of raptors is incredible vision. Visual acuity and eyesight is the third adaptation. I have to wear glasses to help me see. Well, raptors don't need glasses. Ornithologists, those are scientists who study birds, they predict that red-tailed hawks can see three times or even better than most human beings. Let's get back to this particular raptor coworker who works at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. You might wonder, gee, how did she even get to Hawk Mountain? Well, this individual bird arrived at Hawk Mountain in 2015. So you do the math. It's 2020 now. So she's been at Hawk Mountain for how many years? Five years. She's been working very hard meeting folks just like you. She also visits classrooms, universities, senior citizen homes, other important organizations that we work with. And how do we know she's a red-tailed hawk? Well, in flight, red-tailed hawks show us their silhouette or shape. Red-tailed hawks are in a group of raptors that scientists call buteos or budios. That means when we look at their shape in flight, they have broad, wide wings and they have wide tails. And that shape is an adaptation to help them soar and glide. Well, up close, we can see some of these characteristics, some field marks. Well, red-tailed hawks have a belly band. Now, red-tailed hawks are so successful. They're the most commonly seen raptor in all of North America. Well, gee, in fact, their range is Canada to the north of the United States, all the way to Panama. Why are they so successful? Well, if I were to offer this red-tailed hawk a menu, what would be on that menu? We know raptors eat meat, so they are carnivores, but they don't eat hot dogs or hamburgers like we do. Think about small to medium-sized animals. And if I told you that red-tailed hawks are generalists, just like me, she's not a picky eater. That means she's successful and her diet may change throughout the year. Hmm, generalists eat from every single group of animals. Hmm, like a small to medium-sized mammal, Lots of rodents, like mice and rats, squirrels, rabbits. Think about reptiles, like snakes, amphibians, like frogs and toads, big insects, not mosquitoes. Of course, we have smaller birds and other animals in the food chain to eat those small insects. Think about big, juicy, protein-packed insects, like a cricket, a grasshopper, maybe a cicada. She'd also eat smaller birds, maybe some fish, and just like vultures, nature's garbage collectors, red-tailed hawks also scavenge. They eat roadkill. 
That's an important job. Their nature's garbage collectors. So their diet, having a varied diet as a generalist, makes them so successful. Where can you find red-tailed hawks? Well, I tell all my friends, if you haven't seen a red-tailed hawk lately, I guarantee a red-tailed hawk has seen you because they're highly adapted to a variety of habitats. Habitats like a farm, a forest. They're mostly seen around open areas where they can perch on tall trees, billboards. You can even see them when you're driving a car on the highway. Now, think to yourself, how much do you think this bird weighs? Now, red-tailed hawks are the largest hawk found in Pennsylvania, where Hawk Mountain Sanctuary is located. But also keep in mind, birds have incredible adaptations. The unique adaptation of birds are those feathers. And birds have a very different skeletal system than we do. If you guessed about three pounds, you would be correct. Not my weight, the bird's weight. Every time we work with red-tailed hawk and our other feathered coworkers, we weigh them to make sure that she's healthy. Now her wingspan, and wingspan is the measurement from wingtip to wingtip, if she was able to spread both of those wings out equally, her wingspan would be about 48 inches. Hmm. For you math majors, that means an average of four feet. Now, some folks, I know you're taking a, a good look at this raptor up close. You'll notice that her wings are different. One of them, the wing that is closest to me, happens to be drooping down. That's because she was involved in a collision. She needed a job. She was actually hit by a car in northwestern Pennsylvania. So she's from the Keystone State. She was found in Erie, Pennsylvania. You can look at a map and compare Hawk Mountain Sanctuary to Erie, Pennsylvania, or where you're from. And she was found and taken to a wildlife rehabilitation center. Although she's not in pain, her wing could not be 100% healed. And that means although she can fly very short distances, like from perch to perch in her enclosure, she's not able to fly proficiently or well enough to be released into the wild. That means she needed a job and we're so grateful to have her on the education team at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. Other threats. Gee, well, of course, as I mentioned, car collisions are a big threat. Well, window strikes are a huge threat, not only to raptors like this red-tailed hawk, but all birds, because glass is invisible to birds. You can learn more about how you can reduce window strikes by learning more about them. Other threats, not only to red-tailed hawks, but all raptors, happen to be the misuse and overuse of chemicals, like toxins, in our environment. Do you know raptors, like this red-tailed hawk, are the most effective mousetrap? However, some people use rodenticide and insecticide in our environment. Well, those harmful and deadly chemicals impact every part of the ecosystem. 
Other threats to red-tailed hawks and other raptors include electrocution from power lines and also habitat loss or habitat change. Just like us, just like you, red-tailed hawks and raptors need clean water, clean air, they need space, they need shelter, and they need a food source. So any threat to those needs has an impact on red-tailed hawks. So why should we care about raptors? What's the big deal? Well, raptors are important bioindicators of the health of our environment. This red-tailed hawk is named Rosalie. Some of you might be wondering, well, what's that bird's name? Of course, scientists use Latin names or scientific names, so scientists can speak the same language if you're in, on the continent of Asia or North America, Europe. Her common name certainly is red-tailed hawk, but people want to know, no, Rachel, what is her name? The bird's name. Well, if you know your Hawk Mountain sanctuary history, this individual bird is named after our founder, Mrs. Rosalie Edge, who founded this sanctuary in 1934. Sometimes we call her Rosie for short. Now, it wouldn't be fair to tell you I was at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary without mentioning migration. Here at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary, we count migratory raptors, monarch butterflies, migratory species of dragonflies, and other birds annually in the fall. And based on over 85 years of data, I can tell you that red-tailed hawks are part of our big three. They're the third most commonly seen migratory raptor over the Kittatinny Ridge. However, and you might be wondering, well, you just told us the third. How about the first and second? Well, you can visit hawkmountain.org and learn more about our migration counts. I certainly hope that I see everyone at North Lookout anytime between August 15th and December 15th. But I'll just tell you right now, broadwing hawks are our number one most commonly seen migrant, and then the sharp-shinned hawk. Well, red-tailed hawks are actually partial migrants. That means that less than 90% of their population actually moves. So that word migrate or migratory means to move. So red-tailed hawks, you might find one in your backyard year round. Why do animals migrate or move? It's all about food. So there just might not be enough food for all the red-tailed hawks. So those birds may move. You don't have to take my word for it. I work with ornithologists, biologists that answer these questions using tools. Tools like satellite telemetry, like leg bands, or perhaps wing tags. I'm gonna give Rosalie a break and return her to her school box or her Uber. And I'll also give my arm a break and hopefully answer some of your amazing questions. I'll be right back. Thank you, friends. Hi, folks. I'm back. 
Hi, Rachel. Thank you so much for that fantastic presentation. We do have several questions from the audience. Okay. Awesome. One question is, where are red-tailed hawks from? Are they only in North America? Well, gee, they are the most commonly seen raptor in North America. However, when I was researching red-tailed hawks, they're also found in parts of Central America. The southernmost range that I was able to learn about was Panama. And I just wish I had a map in front of me so I could show you where Panama is located. Maybe that's something you could do after this presentation. You know, Hawk Mountain Sanctuary works with, we collaborate and work with scientists all over the globe, including ornithologists and biologists in Panama. Do you know that there are hawk watch sites all over North America? There's probably one near you. Thank you, Rachel. Another question, do red-tailed hawks hunt alone or do they hunt in groups? Oh gee, that's a great question. And immediately I started thinking about Paris hawks. Um, Guess what? Red-tailed hawks typically hunt alone. That's a great question. There are other raptors. I'm thinking of the Harris hawk. That's a species that is not found in Pennsylvania, but they have incredible, incredible hunting strategies. I, I would highly recommend learning about Harris hawks. Thanks, Rachel. What is the average lifespan of a red-tailed hawk? That's a great question. Well, what I've learned is that in the wild, red-tailed hawks can live up to about 20 years. Now in captivity, because we provide food and shelter, and I, I must add, we provide food that is free from toxic chemicals like rodenticide and insecticide. So in captivity, a red-tailed hawk can certainly live longer than 20 years. Thank great question. Thank you. Another, another great question from our audience. Are there any animals that hunt the red-tailed hawk? Oh boy. <laughs> I wish I could say no. However, I have two answers. First of all, when I was mentioning threats to red-tailed hawks, I failed to mention if you look in the mirror, and that goes for everyone, human beings. Human beings continue to serve as a threat to red-tailed hawks and all of wildlife. In fact, direct persecution of red-tailed hawks and other raptors continue. Um, I failed to mention another name besides Rosalie and red-tailed hawk. Some people call red-tailed hawks chicken hawks. So there are lots of chicken farmers who do not appreciate red-tailed hawks. Um, now, I have read one of my favorite books called Hawks Aloft, written by Hawk Mountain Sanctuary's first curator, Maurice Brune. And I recall Maurice Brune, who started our hawk count in September of 1934. I remember that he recorded his observation of a great horned owl flying out of the forest near North Lookout and snatching a red-tailed hawk in flight. That's a great question. Wow. Wonderful. Okay, here's another question. How can I spot a red-tailed hawk nest? What type of trees do they like? What part of the tree should I be looking at to search for the nest? That's a great question. Initially, I was going to say, how do you find? Well, you have to, you have to go out and look. 
I mean, absolutely look. Our best tool is right here, our brains, and use your powers of observation, our eyes, and you can certainly use optics like binoculars or scopes. Before I go into details about red-tailed hawk nests, I do want to caution everyone and tell you that all migratory birds are protected and that also includes their nests. So we want to be very mindful when we are outdoors in a natural environment, we are sharing that ecosystem. We're sharing that environment with every part of our ecosystem. From afar, you may want to look for nests high in the trees. What I remember learning about red-tailed hawks when I was first curious about red tails is that they often build several nests and then choose the very best one with a very high vantage point for hunting. Thank you, Rachel. Another question, do red-tailed hawks mate for life? Mm, oh, gee. At Hawk Mountain, it's Valentine's Day every day. Well, they do. From what I've learned and read, red-tailed hawks are monogamous. And yes, they will mate for life. However, like many raptors, if something happens to a mate, they will replace that mate. I'm thinking of a famous red-tailed hawk who lived in Central Park in New York City uh, named Pale Male. And this was a bird that was observed by many, many, many people. There's an incredible book and even a documentary about Pale Male. And that bird decided to nest on the top of a huge building and all of those behaviors, hunting behavior, uh, they were observed by many and documented by many, many people. Thank you, Rachel. Another question, do red-tailed hawks ever eat carrion or a dead animal or a carcass? Oh, absolutely. Yes. In, in fact, um, let's honor Another scavenger, uh, turkey vultures. Yes, absolutely. Red-tailed hawks will eat carrion or roadkill. So that helps them to be very successful because when they can't find live food, they can help be nature's garbage collectors or the original recyclers by eating roadkill. Great question. Thank you so much for a great answer, Rachel. So now we have a personal question for Ridgetop Rachel. One of the viewers was commenting that they were very impressed by your arm strength holding the red tail for so long. And they want to know how, Rachel, did you get involved with Hawk Mountain? Oh my goodness. Wow, that's an incredible question. Part of that is because I grew up between Little Gap and Lehigh Gap along the Kittatinny Ridge, which just happens to be part of the Appalachian Mountains and an important flyway for migrants. So not only were my parents members, my grandparents were members of Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. And based on our location along this flyway, that migrants follow to save energy as they, as they move, um, it was just a perfect fit. So I knew about Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. I started volunteering at a local wildlife rehabilitation center and I learned as much as I could about all parts of the food chain and all parts of the ecosystem. So I absolutely believe that there's interconnectedness. Every animal, every plant, every part of an ecosystem um, works together. Now, I also learned that Hawk Mountain Sanctuary is 
a leader in raptor conservation, not only right here in my home state of Pennsylvania, but all across the globe. In fact, where we conduct our official migration count at North Lookout is known to people all over the globe as the crossroads of naturalists. So I knew about, wow, I'm lucky enough to live near this incredible place. I want to learn more about it. So I started volunteering and then applied for a, a seasonal job when I was in grad school and the rest is history. Well, we're so glad that you have been such a wonderful uh, force of nature and enthusiasm at Hawk Mountain, Rachel. So uh, we are nearing the end of our time, but uh, there's, and I apologize, we can't get to all the questions. There's so many questions, it's amazing. I would encourage you to follow up. Um, you can always email uh, Rachel or myself. Uh, my email is dawson at hawkmountain.org. You can also contact us on our Facebook page to ask more questions. But one other question that is really important for conservation. So I did wanna ask that. Someone, Rachel was asking, um, is lead toxicity a problem for red-tailed hawks and other raptors? And I just wanna add that this is a very important conservation topic that we are currently trying to uh, design a virtual program uh, to address this topic for the future. But for now, um, Rachel, I don't know if you have any comments about that. Oh, gee, I have lots and lots of comments. Um, I'm a music lover, and I wish that I had a Led Zeppelin uh, album with me because I would play Get the Lead Out. Absolutely. Lead is a huge, I mean, and I'm glad that I'm holding a stuffed turkey vulture because a cousin of the turkey vulture, the California condor, along with many, many raptors like golden eagles, I could go on bald eagles, they are directly impacted by lead. Something that we can do for folks that hunt and use bullets, please, please consider using non-lead ammunition. Again, any change that we make to our environment has an impact. What we do and do not do, so our decisions make an impact. And thank goodness that there are researchers um, that have that same question and they are collecting information. So we absolutely know proof. We have evidence that lead in our environment is a huge hazard to raptors. And we're learning a heck of a lot more, including hazards to human beings. Thank you, Rachel, so much. It was a fantastic presentation. You did a wonderful job with your red-tailed hawk coworker, and thanks for ask, answering all of the <laughs> wonderful questions. And we will be offering our home discovery programs every Wednesday at one o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next week's program is Be a Wildlife Hero. It's Earth Day next Wednesday, the 22nd. Uh, our upcoming stay-at-home speaker series programs include Learning the Language of Birds this Friday, the 17th, Horseshoe Crabs, Keystone to Shorebird Migration and Survival this Sunday, the 19th, and Rosalie Edge, The Ties That Bind on April 22nd, next Wednesday, which is Earth Day. We also are offering a Earth Day art contest for youth ages three to 17 years old. So you can find details about how to enter our virtual art contest on our website or on our Facebook page. Thanks again so much to our wonderful audience for joining us today, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you, friends.